hello, quite impressive here. Um, are there any teachers here? One, two, three, four, five, six, okay. Uh, well, first of all, uh, this is a quite boring slide. It's uh, talking about me, so there are things I do, most uh, related to the game industry and the gamification industry. And <laughs> these are different kind of clients I had, or already have. Uh, so uh, I think it's easier to understand it this way. But I'm focusing on, focusing on game design. Game design on teaching. Teaching at the university. Maybe you have seen this, you are familiar to this. <laughs> and this, you are teaching, all the students are there, maybe using their phones, and you're feeling like this. You want to break the, the phones, you want them to attend to your class. The tradition is this, the master class, the old teacher who only speaks, students don't participate on the experience. But there's a different way, some of you, especially those in the north of, of uh, Europe, are using a more experimental and more collaborative uh, way of teaching, which I believe in. The important thing is that you feel there's a lack of fun when teaching on a traditional way, because students don't participate. And uh, what I found when teaching at the university, I am, I'm teaching uh, especially for game designers, artists, and all of them focus both on gamification and video games. And what I found there was this, strong comfort zone. Nobody wanted to speak. Nobody wanted to change teams. Nobody wanted to break the rules, even though they feel they want to break the rules. And these were my four uh, groups of study while I was teaching. I was lucky enough to have the permission from the university to experiment with some of them. And um, I had to think about them, what kind of problems they had, what kind of fears they had, what they like, they like what they don't like, and of course, how kind of rules they want to break and why. This was really important because um, they also uh, had fears, which I said. But there were two of them which I couldn't solve. And you may be also familiar to this and this. When a student has a phone uh, with low battery, everything changes for him when being in class. It, he or she doesn't attend to what you're telling them. So uh, it was a handicap, a hard to, to solve handicap for me. I focused on game designers, which was one of the four groups, um, especially game designers and level designers. You may be familiar to game design role, but I don't know any of you, uh, if any of you know what a level designer does. It applies the game mechanics, the dynamics, the learning processes to a space. It may be virtual for video games, or it may be a, a real world. They were the most uh, uh, talented when uh, being uh, uh, rule breakers, so I chose them. Why? I wanted to improve their way, the way they work, how they interact between teams. I wanted to improve their production processes. I wanted to teach them, so I became a teacher, but also a role master, and I uh, created an easy, easy, easy game for them. It was really cheap, it was easy to develop, and I only needed some Photoshop and a printer. Of course, the cost was the most important thing, uh, but one thing that was really, really important was to create something that was physical. Because when there's something physical you can touch, you can feel, you can hold, there's a bit of uh, emotional thing on the, on, the thing, on the card. And of course, it was similar to games they played. You know Magic, the card game? Yeah! <laughs> Thanks! I'll pay you later. Um, and of course, it's a flexible system, which allowed me to create more cards or modify some cards whenever needed. The rules were simple. All cards were, were hidden. No students had cards in the very first day. They had to discover how to find the cards. 
by participating on, on class, by helping other students, by maybe uh, helping them speaking in public, all these kind of things. One important thing was that uh, all actions related to the cars were approved by the teacher, the master, me, because they want to break the rules. There were different kind of cards. Cards to work on teamwork, cards that maybe changed some events like the budget of a project, or even the production process, or the deadlines. <coughs> they changed different variables so they couldn't, couldn't um, hold the comfort zone so strong. I'm focusing on the power-ups. This is the anatomy of a car. As you can see, on the left, there's a contact information, so any student could uh, write to me. And on the right side, there are two blank spaces. One of them, the biggest one on the top, is for an image, and the other one is for the description. The five hearts are similar to a Google Play uh, validation with the five stars, so they could finally, uh, after using the card, mark how useful it was. For, for them. This is one of them. I apologize because all the cards are in Spanish, so I'll try to uh, translate what they do for you. Uh, when we work on <coughs> speaking, on speaking in public, on presenting different uh, projects to other people or investors, we have limited time. So uh, one of the most important things what was to play with this time. This card allowed them to modify this time. For them, for the team works. Also, they could rest some time to other teams, which was interesting. Uh, one of the things I try to do with my students, especially those focused on video games, is to play with them online. You can imagine if we are 30, 40 people, how difficult it is to play certain games with limited players. So I created this card. This card allowed them to be on business class, to be the first one on playing, whenever they wanted. The director helps you find the way to be the master of your team. You take the decisions. You are the role of the CIO. The headhunter, by using this, I could take your CV and send it to some uh, recruiters, I know, so them. Uh, they could uh, receive some feedback on their profile. This worked pretty well. And we start with the good ones. Uh, this can be translated as uh, not me. If I ask you a question, you can take that question and redirect it to a friend. You can avoid certain kind of questions. The invocation, the Simonas card. This was one of the most wanted cards. If you are alone pitching for an investor and you cannot be with your team, you have no support, you have to uh, understand that it can happen in the real world, you can use this card and can summon one of your pals on the presentation. One of my students kept this card for four months and in the end, the last day, on the very last presentation, the most important, which decided her note, she used it. I've been keeping this for four months, until now. <laughs> I want him to be with me there. And she summoned a, a friend who's teaching also theater techniques and speaking techniques, so just imagine how the quality of the presentation boosted. This was really, really good, and she also had uh, the highest note on the class. This was the most important things for my students. The smoke bomb. Do you know what a smoke bomb does? Ninja movies, and they disappear. You can apply this to anything you want. Anything you can uh, imagine. Just respect the rule and use it for avoiding questions on the other card, avoiding uh, situations, avoiding whatever you want. Of course, they were trading cards trying to get this one. 
There were like uh, four or five, and they were trading, even paying for them. What's interesting? The top secret. Just imagine an exam with uh, 10 questions. This card allowed you to know two of them a few hours before the exam. This was one of the most uh, wanted cards, but the important thing is that they didn't remember I said on the very first day, there is no exam. <laughs> okay, <laughs> four months later, they didn't remember, but okay, the card is for you. You can use it whenever you want on the exam. <laughs> The main problem I found was that uh, nobody used the card. It took me like five weeks to understand why. I was giving cards each day to students. They wanted to participate, to, to hold the card, but nobody used it. So I asked the, the students, why aren't you use, using cards? One of them said, uh, because I don't want to lose the card. They were collecting the cards. <laughs> it's okay. There's no problem. I sign the card. I take note. You have already used the card. And then you can keep it. Okay. The next day was like hell. <laughs> Everybody was losing their cards. <laughs> I was overwhelmed. I wanted to know uh, the real world, the, the, sorry, the real value of the card. So, uh, I holded one of them and threw it to the students. I think two of them almost died, but uh, they, they fought for keeping the card. This was so interesting, because I know they wanted more and more and more cards. These this kind of uh, small actions uh, allowed me to understand the value, the way they use it, the way they trade with the cards and was really interesting for improving the system, of course. This was my, my face when I saw one of the students with a, with a bit of blood here. It was, no, 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 no. Some results I had. These are numbers for the first edition. 76% of the students kept on the same uh, team for two more years, which was new from time to time from one uh, course to another, students change teams. It's natural. But they kept being on the same team because they had fun with this team by using the cards. 97% of uh, all the people uh, were participating on the, on the class. This means no more students being there, no talking, no speaking, no participating. All of them were moving from week to week to the first lane of the class, which was really, really useful. And 90% of the students admitted they improved their skills when talking in public. And this was really interesting. We use different cards, for example, the regional accent, which makes you speak like one uh, man in Sevilla. Just imagine if you have a student from London and there's a card one of uh, his pals used that uh, tells something like, uh, you have to speak like if you are from Texas. Something like this. It's a bit fun and then you have to improvise a bit. Next steps. Some students were far more. Uh, from this system, and are working themselves on two different apps. That allows me to gamify not even my class and the students, but also the university. There's an information layer. These are prototypes, so uh, please don't be, too, uh, don't, don't be so hard with it. Uh, there's an information part with the class, what kind of uh, class you have, time, etc. Et but also you can create missions you can assign uh, cards to students all by using the app, which is very useful. We have a second new version, which is not uh, here, sorry. But is, uh, I, I promise you it's really, really useful. They're using uh, avatars. This is only for testing. And you can uh, customize them 
by receiving the badges, by receiving the prizes, by receiving the cards you get when doing something. We are also using it by uh, uh, geolocalization, GPS. So when you are on a certain area, there's a mission that becomes active, and then if you do it, you get a, a bigger price. And well, there are other things uh, coming, and it will be 100% uh, free. I work on the university because I love teaching, and of course because I want to contribute the, the other teachers and the industry. And I think this would be a good way to contribute and, and help other teachers. And of course the source code will be available. Uh, I try to be so fast with this, uh, so uh, thank you, and uh, I don't know if you have any questions.